In the criminal justice system, offenses regarding the abuse of state power are considered especially heinous. In the state of Georgia, the dedicated people who attack these felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Defendants. This is Samuel Worcester's story. Samuel Worcester was part of a group of white missionaries living in Cherokee territory. Together with the Cherokee Nation, they were discussing Georgia's attempts to impose state laws on them, as well as how to resist them. I'm telling you, you guys are a self-governing nation. Your independence, as well as your rights, are guaranteed by the treaties you signed with the U.S. federal government. The state of Georgia cannot take that away from you. I agree with you, but the state of Georgia ignores us. I know that the state of Georgia has passed an act that forbids U.S. citizens from living in native territories unless they have a license from the state. This is unfair, as the Cherokee Nation has personally invited me to join them on their land. Furthermore, I am legally serving as a political missionary under the U.S. federal government. Therefore, I should not need a license or a loyalty of oath. There's nothing we can do, though. Snap out of it! However, the state of Georgia thought differently. They arrested Samuel Worcester and the missionaries with him and sentenced them to four years of hard labor. In 1832, William Wirt, former U.S. Attorney General, brought the case to court on behalf of Worcester and the Cherokee Nation. Georgia refused to hire a representative as well as any legal counsel, claiming that the natives cannot bring a case to court. With all due respect, the state of Georgia has absolutely no right to extend its laws into Cherokee territory. The act that got my client arrested violates the Constitution. U.S. Congress reserves the authority to regulate commerce between the Native Americans, not the states. In addition, the Constitution prohibits the states from constructing any laws that change the obligation of the contracts. This includes treaties. That's right. As my client mentioned, treaties between a Cherokee nation and a U.S. federal government recognize the independence and sovereignty of the Cherokees. Therefore, these laws passed by the state of Georgia violate an act passed by Congress in 1802 that regulate trade and interaction between United States citizens and Native Americans. The real issue present at the court was whether or not the state reserves the power to regulate intercourse between citizens of its state and the Native tribes. Georgia, although not present at the court, believed this power rested in the authority of the states. However, Worcester believed otherwise. Ultimately, the court ruled in favor of Worcester by a 5-1 to one vote. On behalf of the Supreme Court, jury, and people gathered here today, I hereby find the defendant not guilty. According to the Constitution, it acknowledges the Indian tribes as separate political entities, rendering the Georgia state void. These hereby actions that were executed by the state of Georgia have violated the Constitution, treaties, and laws of the United States. The Cherokee Nation has its own community with its own territory and set of laws. The laws of Georgia have no power there. They are independent, they have their own set of natural rights. Yes, they are now under the wing and protection of the United States, but protection does not imply nor dictate the destruction of the protected. Interactions between the Native Americans and the United States rest in the power of the federal government. States do not have the right to impose regulations on Native American land. With this, I say, Georgia interfered with the authority of the federal government and their actions are unconstitutional. Thus, the defendants are not guilty. Court dismissed. Worcester versus Georgia helped form the basis for subsequent Indian law in the United States. It also created an important precedent through which Native Americans could claim areas of political autonomy. In the aftermath of the ruling, Georgia ignored the court's decision. Worcester and the other missionaries were kept in prison until 1833, when they were released and granted a pardon. John Marshall had made his decision. Now let him enforce it. I have no obligation to the court, therefore I have nothing to enforce. 
the federal marshal to ask not to enforce this decision. The lack of enforcement by Andrew Jackson subsequently allowed more states to pass harmful legislation towards the Native Americans. Perhaps this was done on purpose, to avoid conflict between the court's ruling and the executive branch, while still painting the ruling as a pro-Native decision. In 1838, the government began forcing the Cherokees off their land, otherwise known as the Trail of Tears. Because of his actions, the ruling from Worcester versus Georgia did not help the natives in protecting their rights. <laughs> Take this to court. I'd like to take it back to the help.